Hi, it's The Wire. It's September 18th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about the huge event, and it's huge. If you don't know, you need to figure it out. Between former heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua and a current heavyweight champion, he's the title holder, Daniel Dubois, that's taking place in the United Kingdom, really ground zero for heavyweight boxing in this era. Let's talk about it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, years ago, in 2000, a diminished Mike Tyson, already in his 30s, right? His heyday is really the late 80s. Well, he traveled to the United Kingdom. <clears throat> Don't fight the tape. He traveled to the United Kingdom. Politicians were outraged. They wanted to prevent his entry into the country. He gets to the airport and bedlam breaks out. People started coming in to where Tyson was from other terminals, right? Such was the Tyson celebrity. Right now, it doesn't have to make sense to others. It made sense to these fans. Tyson was to fight British heavyweight champion Julius Francis. Just understand, whatever else was going on in boxing, and you had better boxers than Tyson at the time, right? Evander Holyfield, the UK's own Lennox Lewis. Whatever was going on in the world of boxing, just understand that the public had a relationship with Mike Tyson. The airport was swamped. Later, Tyson decides to go for a walk. People start coming out of the woodwork. This was an unscheduled walk. People came out of the woodwork to see Mike Tyson. Right? Folks, celebrity is a very hard thing to pin down. When you look at the heavyweight championship, and this is a unique position in all of sports, right? I would say the only comparable position is the world's fastest man, right? When you look at the heavyweight championship, some of the most popular champions weren't the best. In other words, you know, you have a past as prime Mike Tyson. Folks, there's no other fighter on the planet at that time, not even Lennox Lewis, who could generate the crowds that Mike Tyson was generating just by walking down the street. In my favorites folder, I have uh, Buncey talking to Frank Warren about that episode in British boxing. Right, let's name some champions here who had special relationships, is what we'll call them, with the public. Jack Dempsey. Understand, Dempsey had a tough, rough, and tumble fight with Fuepo. Understand, Dempsey is rumored to have thrown a fight against fireman Jim Flynn. Dempsey himself is from a spotty background involving bordellos. Right, but understand, Jack Dempsey pulled crowds. People loved Jack Dempsey. By the time he becomes champion, right, folks, he is the guy. You know, there's, there's no other guy. He is the guy in the heavyweight division. Whether or not you believe he could beat some of the other champions, Right? He's the guy. Rumors of links to, you know, the underworld and stuff like that weren't going to stop him. 
He was the guy. Another guy, and understand, these very popular champions are few and far between. Right, Dempsey, of course, has tough fights against Sharky. Loses to Gene Tunney. But yet, Dempsey, during his reign, was far and away the most popular fighter in the heavyweight division. Let's name another guy. And this guy's fascinating to me because I believe he was a guy playing a role. My father's favorite fighter, Joe Lewis, right? Understand, Lewis loses to Max Schmeling. Lewis had an attitude on him in real life. They claim the only guy who Lewis would call champion was James Braddock the guy who gave him the shot at the title, right? And understand, Lewis had to give away part of his future purses for that title shot. Lewis had a felon in his corner. Lewis himself hung around the underworld, right? There are photos of Lewis hanging out with Blinky Palermo. But playing a role, playing the not Jack Johnson, making sure that even though he was a KO puncher, he did not linger over fallen white opponents, right? Not being seen in public, dating white women, even though that's exactly what he did later in life when he was living in Las Vegas, right? Behind the scenes, it's Joe Lewis who saves Ray Robinson's career, arguably after Ray Robinson deserts the army, right? Well, just understand, the public loved Joe Lewis. This is in a Jim Crow era. Joe Lewis, the Brown Bomber, had the public on his side. That Max Smelling, that Max Smelling rematch is one of the big moments in boxing history. The press started what they called a bum of the month club. Lewis, longest reigning heavyweight champion. Right, folks, he's loved. Had a special relationship with the fans, right? Of course you have Ali. Let me just point out, Ali's intriguing because we remember him differently than he was, right? Online here, they have the film of Ali's entrance for the rematch, the Phantom Punch fight in Lewiston, Maine against Sonny Liston, right, folks? It's Ali the crowd boos as he enters the ring, right? Sonny Liston, a great fighter. In my opinion, skill-wise, one of the best heavyweight champs ever, even though he had a very short reign. It's Liston who gets the louder cheers than Ali, right? Bob Arum talks about flying coach, not first class, with Ali and how tough it was getting Ali fights, right? Ali comes out as a black Muslim. That wasn't exactly the most popular move of the day. I can tell you in the 70s, at the height of Ali's fan adulation, he fights Ken Norton in Yankee Stadium. I was living in New York City at the time, and I can tell you that fight was not close to a sellout, right? But understand Ali had a special relationship with fans. He's in Africa to fight an unbeaten heavyweight champion, George Foreman, and of course, Ali is running on the street and it's a scene out of the Rocky movie, right? Suddenly, people start running with him, right? The crowd is with him. Fight between two black fighters, but yet the crowd is with Ali, the guy in his 30s, right? And of course, Tyson, who I've mentioned, right? Tyson could lose twice, not once, but twice, to Evander Holyfield. 
right? That's not going to stop fans from following Tyson around, right? The big secret in boxing is there's the heavyweight champion, the guy who has the belt, but then from time to time, there's a different person. He's the guy who has the fans. He's the guy who gets the money. Whoever has the title, let's not confuse that with the cash cow king of the division. Now, in boxing, folks, the heavyweight division only has one cash cow king. He's iconic in this era. And his name is Anthony Joshua. Right, let me say I've been here online for a little over a decade. And I'm running off at the mouth in videos. One of the great things with having a YouTube channel is you can just keep it real. You don't have to follow public narratives. As I like to say, the public narrative is just one narrative. Right, so someone like me will point out that a Vladimir Klitschko hasn't fought for a year leading into his fight against Anthony Joshua, right? And of course, let's keep it real here. Klitschko knocks down Joshua in that fight. Joshua gets the stoppage, knocks down Klitschko first, but Klitschko makes it to the later rounds, right? And this is a Klitschko who had already lost to Tyson Fury, right? Guys like me can come on and can actually talk boxing, right? I thought Joshua was losing. To Alexander Povetkin and another, excuse me, another Olympic gold medalist, right? I thought Povetkin's beating Joshua. Joshua's a blessed puncher. He only had to be right once. He catches Povetkin on the way in and drops Povetkin. Right? Just understand, every time here online, and it's been a gradual realization for me personally, you know, I'll be critical of several fighters, right? Even the greats, right? The Canelo crowd knows that I privately feel that he lost to Laura, that Cotto could have been awarded the decision. Scorecards were wide against Canelo. I thought the uh, Mayweather-Canelo fight was a mismatch, right? I thought Canelo was going to have problems with Billy Joe Saunders, just like I felt. Anthony Joshua was going to have problems with Kubrat Pulev, right? Joshua proved me wrong. Well, not so much after Pulev gets off the canvas and gets back in the fight. But let's just say I've been critical of fighters, right? I've pointed out that Mean Machine, in my opinion, drops Terrence Crawford in that fight. Ref misses it. Crawford gets up, pretends he hasn't been dropped, goes on to win the fight. You can be boxing royalty here. I'll criticize a fighter. I'll say, hey, this guy is better than advertised. This guy's a little overhyped. But the one thing I can tell you with certainty is that when I started being a little bit critical of Anthony Joshua, there was a ferocity in the comment section that surprised me. It took me a while to realize that even though this guy, in my opinion, in a home country Olympics, right? The Olympics was in London that year. Barely, if you believe he did, wins the gold medal, right? Just understand there was a fan base out there. This guy is more popular than we realize, and it's a bit astonishing. Because his country has had some great heavyweights during this era. Right? Tyson Fury, when he's not having problems, right? And let's remember Tyson Fury, you know, mental health problems. Uh, the British board thought he might be a juicer, right? Um, Tyson Fury's actually a great fighter, right? You have some serious underdogs. 
People like Dillian White, look up his background. Look at what he has been through. And in a world of real fighters in the UK, I think Joe Joyce should have been awarded the gold medal, his Olympics, right? In a hotbed of excellent heavyweights, the crowd has adopted one as their favorite. Folks, it's Anthony Joshua's world, and we're just living in it. Understand, Joshua, in my eyes, whoever has had the title, whoever has had the title, Joshua, in my eyes, has been the cash cow of the heavyweight division for years. And his personality has evolved. Young Joshua, and people seem to <laughs> overlook this, right? I remember it in real time. Young Joshua had an attitude, just like Joe Lewis, right? Had an attitude. And young Joshua was critical of a fighter who should be a national treasure in the United Kingdom, Lennox Lewis. Lewis, great fighter, right? Lewis beat every man who beat him. Right, Lewis, Tyson, folks, that's a mismatch. Right, Lewis, quite frankly, beat Evander Holyfield twice. They called the first fight a draw for some reason. Right, people forget, Google it, that young Joshua thought he was better than Lennox Lewis. <laughs> young Joshua, you know, Lewis now is a boxing analyst. Young Joshua took exception to some things Lewis said about him, and Joshua was, uh, you know not exactly welcoming of Lennox Lewis, a guy who really uh, put British heavyweight boxing front and center internationally. Understand, the Brits always had interesting boxers, right? Henry Cooper, Joe Bugner. But Lennox Lewis was a moment in time where you looked at a British fighter and you thought, you know what? This guy is the best in the world. Lewis, of course, was the heavyweight division's last undisputed champion. Young Joshua wasn't a big fan. Young Joshua wasn't political. Young Joshua felt that he wasn't getting a fair shake and wanted people to know about it. Right? Young Joshua had an opportunity to fight Deontay Wilder, America's best. Wilder was willing to cross the Atlantic. Now, I know the Joshua people always questioned me on this, right? They have a version of events where Wilder was avoiding Joshua, right? I believe that's out of the fictional section, but it's out there. The narrative's out there, right? But just understand, Joshua, with a fawning public, somehow never gets in the ring with Deontay Wilder, unbeaten champion at the time, or with a fighter coming in from Siberia who previously beat Klitschko, his own countryman, Tyson Fury. And yet, the public was fawning for Joshua like they fawned over Jack Dempsey, over Joe Lewis, over Ali, over Tyson, right? Well, just understand, Joshua really is an Elvis figure. The reason I mention Elvis is that Elvis had fans who knew there were parts of the guy that were sketchy, right? They understood the guy wasn't perfect. They understood the guy had critics. They understood when Elvis started making movies that he wasn't in Oscar contention. It wasn't like you went to a movie and you thought, oh my goodness, Elvis is such a great actor. But yet the Elvis crowd stayed with Elvis, right? All the way to Las Vegas later in his career. So Anthony Joshua fights a real fighter. 
in the United Kingdom. He has every advantage. This guy's on the road. This guy's not even a guy with much heavyweight experience. He's come up from the cruiserweight division. Alexander Usyk. If you're a boxing hardcore type, you thought to yourself, wow, this is a real fighter. Right? This is a guy who, you know, has lived on the road. Has beaten Gassiev in Russia. Has beaten Breedis in Lafia. Right? This is the real deal. He's beaten Glowacki in Poland. He fights Joshua in the UK. He beat Bellew in the UK. And folks, Joshua loses both fights to Usyk. In fact, in both fights, you had the same issue. You thought, when is Joshua going to open up? Well, understand, like the Elvis crowd, all the Usyk fights did was commit the fans that much more to Joshua, just like Tyson biting Evander Holyfield's ear twice. Not once, twice. Mills Lane lets the fight continue after the first ear bite. Think about that. Right? Well, just like the Tyson fans were out, we the public, and it's really about the public, weren't going to abandon Tyson even after he ear bites his way out of a big fight. Right? With a Hall of Fame opponent. The Joshua fans are committed. So in a sport where you've had great fighters, I'm talking about some of the best fighters I've ever seen, who could not pull a crowd for years. Right? Marvin Hagler couldn't pull a crowd for years. Floyd Mayweather could not pull a crowd for years. Sonny Liston wins the heavyweight championship. Goes back to Philly. Is expecting a parade and there was no parade for him. Right, folks, those three guys are three of the best guys I've ever seen. Right, boxing has quite a few fighters who were great. Right, my dad talked a lot about Joe Lewis. I had to read to learn that Joe Lewis lost to Ezra Charles. He never mentioned Ezra Charles. Right? I had to learn about Ezra Charles. Great fighter. Great. Couldn't pull a crowd. You have the opposite in boxing at times. That's this fighter, Anthony Joshua. Now understand, the dynamic at Wembley is going to be worth whatever the price of admission is. Because you have another dynamic working here. Right? That London Olympics was 2012. The heavyweight division, thanks to rematch clauses and clever promoters, has found a way to shut out the under-30 crowd. So you now have an under 30 fighter. Right, folks? He might be the best of his generation that we know of right now. And that's Daniel Dubois. Now just understand, in the UK, in my opinion, AJ is king with the fans. I think Tyson Fury is a better fighter today. But he doesn't connect with the fans like Anthony Joshua does. Understand, Tyson Fury needs a belt to pull a crowd. Right? Or he needs to be fighting the guy with a belt to pull a crowd. AJ can fight Jermaine Franklin and pull a crowd. Right? There's just a difference but understand, AJ, who really is king in boxing in the UK, is fighting a man who could be king. Right? Daniel Dubois, 27, is from the UK himself. 
you're going to have a lot of young people who feel, look, man, it's my time. This generation, you know who you are. You're in your 20s. You're looking at older generations, and you're thinking, man, these older people messed it up for us, didn't they? How are we dealing with all this debt? How is the price of houses so unaffordable? Right? These older people, they could barely use a flip phone. Who are they to be telling me whether I have to come into the office to work? Right? It's young people who are taking over the world. Right? Young people are looking around and, you know, the idea of not having a phone for a period of time sounds prehistoric to them. So they can't relate to the 1980s. Hell, they can't relate to the 2012 Olympics. So you tell me what's going to happen here. Folks, it's a thin line between love and hate. I'm telling you, all of these guys, the crowd turns on them eventually. Right? Dempsey goes bankrupt. Dempsey has to be a referee to support himself. Joe Lewis has financial problems, big-time tax problems later in life. Right? When he gets to Vegas, he starts hanging out with, we'll call it, edgy types. Right? Behind the scenes, he's good friends with Sonny Liston. Right? Ali, folks, people knew by the time he fought Larry Holmes that he shouldn't be in the ring. We knew something was wrong. We didn't know it was Parkinson's, but... We knew something was wrong, right? What's Ali doing fighting a guy with less than 10 pro fights, an undersized heavyweight named Leon Spinks, and then losing Leon Spinks, right? The Tyson story, folks, you know, when Tyson loses to Kevin McBride, people were cheering. Right? Just understand, uh, he lost to a fighter from Brixton before then. Um, Tyson was washed at the end of his career. So here you have Anthony Joshua. And let's be clear here. He's looked great in fights. The Otto Wallen fight, folks, that's the best performance I've seen against Wallen. And Wallen, of course, has fought Tyson Fury. Has fought Murat Gassiev. Right, Joshua looked great against Otto Wallen, but Wallen doesn't have anything close to Dubois punch. There's no threat that you're going to get stopped early if you make a mistake. Right, his fight against Francis Ngannou, no, I'm impressed by Ngannou. Right, there are some out there who feel he beat Tyson Fury. I'm not saying Ngannou is chopped liver. But what I am saying is Ngannou is a guy in his second pro fight as a boxer, right? Ngannou is lingering out there, doesn't really have his guard up, is vulnerable in that fight. Now, based on those two fights, Joshua has a shot at the title, right, folks? When you're a cash cow king in a sport that's profit-centered, Right? The promoters are trying to make money. Right? The sanctioning body is trying to get sanctioning fees. They want a charismatic champion because that fills the coffers. Right? Joshua has this shot on a young guy. Now, are you sure? We know the people who will be sitting ringside are going to be the cognoscenti. Right? It's going to be the beautiful people. It's going to be the people with enough money to pay for ringside tickets, right? It's going to be the people with connections who, of course, the promoter will say, hey, Stanley, do you want any tickets, right? We understand that this generation that's having problems paying rent is not going to be ringside for this fight. They're going to be in the rafters of this sellout. Are you sure the rafters aren't going to take over. How is Daniel Dubois, who has only lost to Joe Joyce and to 
Usyk, a guy who beat Joshua twice. How is Daniel Dubois going off at a plus 300 straight up when he's entering the ring with the title? When, and I know <laughs> my own subscribers don't believe me, when Dubois has already beaten a guy I consider to be better than Joshua in, dare I say it, the heir apparent, Philippe Ergovic, right? How is Dubois going off at a plus 300? Understand anything north of a plus 150 would give Dubois less than a 40% chance of winning the fight. This fight is not just in Joshua's home country, it's in Dubois' home country. Let's face it too, Dubois is a guy who can get outlanded. Isn't he eating a lot of Ergovic punches? Dubois has Joshua level punching power, doesn't he? Dubois only has to be right once, doesn't he? Is there going to be a moment in this fight where suddenly you start hearing cheering from the rafters? Suddenly you start hearing cheering from someone who's 27 themselves or younger. Right? Fans who may have gotten into the sport after the 2012 Olympics. Isn't there a possibility here that Daniel Dubois, even if he's under fire, as he was in the Kevin Lorena fight, I keep telling people that's an important fight. Right? Dubois gets caught. Dubois hits the canvas early. Dubois is desperate. He's looking at his corner. Dubois comes back. That fight doesn't make it to the middle rounds. Isn't there the possibility that a shootout ensues? That Dubois lands? And suddenly you have a part of the fan base that has not been heard from. Young people wondering where are all the great heavyweights under 30. Suddenly realizing that their guy entered the ring with the title. And is now this close against an older fan favorite of legitimating his crown. Right, folks, I'll just put it to you this way. Anthony Joshua is the more cautious fighter. Right? There's been a lot of uncertainty in the Joshua corner. In fact, the corner keeps changing. Now he's with Ben Davison. What is this, the third fight together? Right, folks? I think Joshua is very talented. I believe Joshua's a Hall of Famer. Right, he beat Joe Parker. Let's look back on that fight. Parker, of course, now has beaten Deontay Wilder and Jili Zhang. Let's face it, two guys Joshua hasn't fought. Right, he beat Joe Parker. He beat Vladimir Klitschko. Um, he beat Alexander Povetkin, who himself was a former champion. He beat Dillian White, who, of course, would go on to beat Alexander Povetkin. He did avenge the loss to Andy Ruiz. Um, as Joshua himself says, from time to time, the old Joshua emerges. When he fights the guys who gave Tyson Fury problems, he ends those fights earlier than Tyson Fury did. Right? So just to understand, I believe Joshua's a Hall of Famer. The question is, since Joe Lewis fell apart when he was roughly Joshua's age now, right? Since, you know, Joshua has had hard times. Since these guys have sparred together already, Joshua and Dubois, and according to folklore, and boxing has a code, right? Martin Bacoli's breaking the code, talking about his sparring with Usyk, but boxing has a code. I bring you in to spar, 
we don't tell anybody how sparring went. Right? But according to some insiders, Daniel Dubois, who was a youngster at the time, had some moments in that sparring session. Right? So let's talk about this fight. I'll just say this. There are fighters out there like Lawrence Okole. By the way, Okole is one of the best interviews in boxing. Right? By the way, Okole offered Kevin Lorraine a step-aside money so that he could fight a guy coming off a loss, Richard Reactpour, for the Bridgeway title. And Lorena, who, of course, gave Dubois one of his toughest fights. Again, revisit that fight. It's not a long tape. Has said, hey, I don't want to step aside. <laughs> you know? If I'm the mandatory, I should get the next fight. Lorena thinks he can beat Lawrence Okole. Well, Lawrence Okole's analysis of the Joshua Dubois fight, to me, is spot on. He said, look, Joshua needs to start fast. Because if Dubois gets any kind of confidence here, he's going to have problems. Well, here's the catch in this fight. Joshua's not a fast starter against big-time sluggers, is he? I know he has a lot of early KOs, right? That Charles Martin fight, for example, Martin has a punch, right? Joshua gets an early stoppage in that fight. But here, there's some familiarity. Do you think Joshua's going to come in and try to start fast against Dubois? The bet I like. We're going to dissect this, right? I don't think the fight goes the distance. You're getting better than a minus 500 on those odds. But you know here, we're risk takers. I don't want minus anything, right, for this fight. I believe Dubois survives the first three rounds, Right? If Dubois doesn't win the fight in the first three rounds, and there's a possibility, I believe Dubois survives the first three rounds. So the bet I like, the risk I'm taking, the hole in the bet, how you're able to structure bets is when you have vulnerabilities. The hole in the bet is, I'm not taking Joshua for the first three rounds of this fight. I believe the fight ends by stoppage somewhere between the 4th round and the 11th round. I don't believe it goes the distance. Now, casinos are offering you a lot of round group betting. Right? You can be creative and take things like Joshua in rounds, you know, 5 to 8, and then you could buy round 4. Right? And you could get expected earnings that are plus. Right? You even have alt over-unders where you can take the under 10.5 rounds which would give you to the midway point of the 11th round. But the secret to this fight is I believe personality is very hard to break. I believe Joshua, coming off a second round KO of Francis Ngannou, is going to be cautious the first three rounds. Right? That second round KO has skewed the betting odds. I believe on the Dubois side of the play, you're getting a gift. A plus 300 for Dubois, whatever happens, as long as he wins the fight, to me is too tasty to pass up. With Joshua, I'm going to find a way to get rounds 4 to 11. Right? I can buy round group betting. I can play games with an high over-under. Understand, these days, the casinos are using algorithms and the computer is able to dampen the odds and give you more opportunity with these alt lines. The action in boxing betting right now is on the alt lines. So I want Joshua, right, rounds four to... 
We'll say the end of the 10th. Those are the rounds I want Joshua. Right? I have a chance to hedge it with Dubois plus 300. Folks, this is a puncher's fight. I believe Joshua is the more orthodox puncher. In other words, um, Joshua is better between the punches. Right? Joshua is the guy who can come out. Joshua has tools you don't see every fight. He has an excellent jab. He has an excellent left hook. Right? Joshua, if he wants, can come out, understand the Joe Joyce fight. Joyce's jab was the issue. Got news for you. In the Southpaw Usyk fight, Usyk's jab is the issue. Joshua could come out and hide behind the jab. But Joshua is a guy who needs to see the weather conditions before he drives on the road. Dubois is different. If Dubois is switched on, if he is on his A game, you're going to have big problems. The question with Dubois is whether he's going to be on his A game. Right? Because Dubois' performance against Joyce and Dubois' performance against Usyk, look, you can be ineffective against those guys, right? Boxing is about defusing your bomb. But Dubois looked uninspired against those guys. It's hard to reconcile the Dubois who comes out against Usyk with the World Heavyweight Championship hanging in the balance with the Dubois who came out against Philippe Ergovic. <laughs> I know, the public doubts me on Ergovic, and that's great. That's great. More beer for me, right? I'd take Ergovic over Joshua. Just understand, the Dubois who comes out against Ergovic, folks, he's losing. Ergovic is the one landing shots. But what's noteworthy in that fight is that Dubois is fighting back. If the Dubois who fought Ergovic shows up for this fight against Joshua, and understand, this is his moment. It's his country. It's his generation. Right? Some guys need to be underdogs to fight well. I know these fighters are saying, hey, I don't care about the odds. I'm just in it to win it. They're saying the politically correct things. You and I know Dubois is looking at the fact that he is the title holder. And they're doing him like this in the odds of plus 300? I mean, understand how ridiculous it is right now. Look at your sports book. Joshua by stoppage is greater than a minus 200. That's a minus 225. Right? The bookmakers assume that this is a Joshua layup opportunity. Right? Dubois might be one of these guys who needs to be motivated like this, who needs to be written off before he enters the ring with a fire in his belly. Right, folks, I believe these odds are outrageous. Right, Dubois plus 300, sign me up. Right, but I'm going to be smart. I'm also going to find a way to have Joshua from the start of the fourth round to the end of the tenth round. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. I might even buy the 11th round, but I don't see this fight making it into the 12th. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Understand the dynamic here. If Joshua comes out and decides he's going to throw a jab, he's going to imitate Joe Joyce. I believe that Dubois understands he can't sit back and be patient and think he's going to take over the fight in the second half. I believe he understands it'd be too devastating to his brand. He's better off going kamikaze. So, the, the guys come out. Joshua's throwing a jab, establishing distance, dictating tempo. Dubois is a guy who's going to have to say to himself, hey man, 
I'm better off trying to knock down this jab and diving in the pocket, throwing looping shots, which Dubois can do. Throwing looping shots, letting this jab hit me in the face with the understanding that this fight is not going to go long enough for my face to get busted up. Kind of like Martin Bacoli against Jared Anderson saying, okay, I'm going to let this guy hit me in the body. Because if it convinces this guy to open up, let's have at it. Right? This fight's not going to go long enough where these body shots are going to deplete me. Right? I believe because of his prior car crashes, Dubois is going to be a better driver and force the issue in this fight. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Just understand, folks, you're dealing with that rare, we'll call him champion. You're dealing with that rare uncrowned champion here who has a special relationship with the fans. Life is unfair. But just to understand, Joshua, for whatever reason, connects with fans like a Ray Robinson, like a Ray Leonard, like a Manny Pacquiao. Right? Let's not kid ourselves. You're going to have a group in there. Right? They're going to be the people in the expensive seats who have come to see their fighter, and he's their fighter, whatever car crashes he's had in the past. Those two Usyk losses, okay. Our guy wasn't completely ready for that fight, uh, even though he had been heavyweight champion <laughs> in the past, right? That first Andy Ruiz fight, even though Joshua isn't knocked down once off a lucky punch, he's locked down several times in that fight. People are going to say, hey, well, Andy was a late-minute replacement. Our guy didn't have a full camp. He was supposed to fight Gerald Miller. Andy came in, he wasn't quite ready, didn't quite know who Andy was, right? We're making excuses for Joshua. That's what happens when you're talking about great fighters, right? The Ray Leonard crowd, Ray fights, Roberto Duran gets beaten. You've never seen bigger apologists than Ray Leonard fans when Ray Leonard got beaten by Duran the first time. Right? Ray gets knocked down twice by Thomas Hearns in the rematch. Yes, the rematch happened. I'm telling you, my dad was a Ray Leonard guy. I'm just telling you, Ray Leonard fans somehow came up with a way to say, hey, you know, this was a fluke occurrence. Uh, they call that fight a draw. That's okay. Ray did look good in other rounds. Right? The Joshua people, I'm just telling you, folks, he's bulletproof. Right? Dubois needs to understand he's not getting a decision, even in his country, against Anthony Joshua unless he knocks down Joshua at least once, right? Unless the people in the rafters make so much noise that the judges sitting ringside hear them. Those are my thoughts. I look forward to yours. Thanks for stopping by.